life's simple pleasures, both for your baby and for you. As a parent, it's really well worth knowing that there are a few things that every baby, regardless of age, size or temperament, needs to enjoy a good night's sleep. Newborn babies need to be fed during the night and most won't be able to sleep through until at least six weeks. But after six weeks, it's time to start pointing your baby in the direction of sleeping through. Do remember though, for many babies, especially small or premature babies, they will still need to have a night feed right up until the age of six months. There are six basic essentials for a good night's sleep. Number one, a loving and consistent bedtime routine. Number two, a safe and familiar sleeping environment. Number three, to be warm and cosy but not overheated. Number four, well-managed daytime naps so that they're sleepy but not overtired at bedtime. Number five, to be well-fed, winded but not to have an overfull tummy when they go to sleep. Number six, to fall asleep fully aware that they are in the cot. Introducing a good bedtime routine is the single most important thing that you can do to help your baby have a good night's sleep. It really is well worth making an effort with this because once the routine is established, it will make such a difference, not just to your baby's sleep, but also to you. The best bedtime routine provides a familiar series of steps leading up to bedtime and each of these steps will become a sleep trigger for your child. Your routine can be as short and sweet or as long as you like, as long as it's consistent. You should only begin your baby's bedtime routine when you know that she's ready to sleep. The process of the routine is much more important than the time at which it's carried out. So if they've slept late in the afternoon, it makes sense to put them to bed a bit later at night. Putting a baby to bed with too much energy to spare is likely to result in them crying out and calling for you and it can even result in them developing negative associations with bedtime. So here's a great bedtime routine. Begin your routine shortly before you know that your baby is ready for sleep. Take everything that you need for the night with you to avoid having to come back into the living area. Follow a similar bedtime script by using familiar phrases, songs and actions at key points during the routine. Bath every night unless there are genuine reasons why you can't and sing the same action song in the bath each time. Then go directly to your baby's room after the bath or to your room if your baby sleeps in there. Clean nappy, milk feed, a story or good night song, note that this should come after the feed. Then lights down and into the cot, awake but sleepy, to settle for the night. When teaching your baby to sleep through the night, it goes without saying that their safety is of paramount importance. It is strongly advised that all parents follow the safe to sleep guidelines set out by the Foundation for the Study of Infant Deaths. You can find this information on their website www.fsid.org.uk or from your clinic, health visitor or GP. We know that the safest temperature for a baby's room should be 16 to 20 degrees centigrade and it's recommended that parents use a room thermometer so that they can check that it's neither too hot nor too cold. With an older baby or toddler, you need to make sure that the cot mattress is on its lowest setting to prevent climbing out. If your child is in a bed, you will need to have a stair gate, either in the bedroom door or at the stairs. You'll also need to make sure that the room is kept safe by using covers for electric sockets, that bookcases and drawers are secured to the wall and that pictures and ornaments are out of your child's reach. Because toddlers love to climb and explore, make sure that any furniture that they could climb on is not near the window. Baby's night clothes should be soft, cosy, made of natural fibres and should fit properly. In normal circumstances, a baby would need a combination of a vest, a baby grow and a grow bag. 
Baby sleep bags are great because they keep babies snug and you don't have to worry about them kicking the covers off or the covers going over their head. It's important to get the size right though. If they're too tight, they'll be uncomfortable and too loose and there's a danger that the baby can wriggle down into the bag. Baby sleep bags are safe to use, provided that they are the right size for the weight of your child and that they're cotton, lightweight and don't have a hood. Sleep bags should never be used with a duvet or a quilt. There are many sleep bags available to buy, but the only one that's recommended by the Foundation for the Study of Infant Deaths is the Grow Bag brand. In recent years, there's been a swing back to the practice of offering babies structured, controlled naps, ideally taken at set times in the baby's own cot. This is great if you can manage it, but for many people, it's really difficult, especially if you have older children to consider. The important thing to remember is that as long as your baby has the opportunity to nap during the day, it doesn't really matter where the naps are taken. This can be in the cot, but equally in the pram, in the car seat, or even in the baby carrier. If you find it difficult to settle your baby into the cot for daytime naps, you should concentrate on developing the nighttime sleep skills first, and then tackle the daytime naps. Younger babies should be encouraged to have a mini nap at about four or five in the afternoon, so that they're not overtired when it comes to bedtime. This isn't the case with older babies though. Over napping or late napping in the afternoon can cause settling problems for them. It's lovely to give your baby a breast or bottle feed to help them to settle to sleep at night, but try not to let them fall asleep over the milk feed. That way they won't need to feed again as a sleep trigger when they wake up later in the night. By discouraging a milk sleep association, you will help your baby to drop the night feeds when they're no longer nutritionally necessary, and you'll enable your baby to start sleeping through from an earlier age. Remember that by the age of six months, a night feed is hardly ever necessary, and in fact continuing to feed after six months will only impair your baby's appetite for his solid foods during the day. The majority of baby's sleep problems are caused by them being either rocked or fed to sleep and not being put into the cot until they are fast asleep. Later on, when a baby wakes during the natural light phase of a sleep cycle, they're understandably upset to find themselves in a different place. Most parents will then react by picking the baby up and comforting them back to sleep again. Remember, you can't prevent your baby waking up during the night, but what you can do is give your child the skills to be able to resettle themselves when they do wake. One of the many advantages of the grow bag is that you can put your baby down to sleep knowing that they're going to be the right temperature and that they're not going to kick off their covers. It's really good to seek advice about your baby's sleep, but remember to always combine any information that you receive with your own instinct as a parent. You want what is best for your baby and you are the best person to decide the right routine for her. Be loving, be consistent and above all else, be confident.